Hey cousins, welcome to Brown Liquor and Bad Ideas. Welcome cousins to this episode of Brown Liquor and Bad Ideas. I'm your host Cornell Wright, the People's Lobbyist. I'm your cousin and I got the Supply Chain Blues. Brown Liquor and Bad Ideas is intended for the participation of responsible adults of legal drinking age who wish to engage in substantive virtual discussions and social drinking for entertainment purposes only. Brown Liquor and Bad Ideas does not advocate the abuse of alcoholic beverages. Choosing to participate in any of the drinking activities shared in the program should be made with moderation and caution and is the sole responsibility of the user. So cousins, I'm still wearing my mask, and yeah, you are too, too. You know, I know people are starting to get away from it and kind of ignoring it, but uh, hey, now we got flu season on top of COVID, and so come on, let's take care of people, because we know the older cousins are more exposed than the younger cousins, and don't we want to keep the older cousins around too? Yeah, help me out. So cousins, today... This is not necessarily a political conversation as we may have had in the past. It's just kind of a what's happening in the world kind of conversation. And so I'm calling it the supply chain blues. All right. So I'm sure you all may not know what it means, but I'm going to explain the supply chain blues. And by the end of this episode of you having this, this brown looking with me, you might have supply chain blues too. <laughs> so cousins. Let's start off with the whole concept of how all the products around the world are moved, okay? So unless you know the artisan that's creating the pottery, the wood piece or stone or whatever, that you talk to this artisan and they make, they make it for you, that is a craft that's localized. You with me, cousins? Almost everything else we get, however, and we buy is not localized, meaning it's not from your town. Even if you have a manufacturing facility in your town, you can't go buy those products necessarily out of those plants in your town. You with me? Because those are being shipped wherever that company can sell the product around the world. All right? So everything is being sold around the world for most of the things that we have. If you look on the items that you have, you'll see where they're made, made in Hong Kong, made in China, made in the United States, not as many, made in Taiwan, made in India, pick a made from, that's where people can find products, okay? So there's this other thing called just-in-time inventory, cousins, and that is a very efficient way of handling concepts and handling products. It's kind of like playing the game of hot potato. Remember hot potato when you were playing as a kid? I got it, I'm gonna pass it off to you before I get burnt. That's the same idea that's happening with inventory around the world. No one wants to keep it for any longer than absolutely necessary. That's what just-in-time inventory says, hot potato, all right? So then, cousins, you have a situation in which you have these things moving and it was oh so smooth, oh so fine before COVID-19 impacted us, right? And then people say that COVID didn't have any impact or didn't matter. Well, let me tell you some of the reasons why, all you cousins who feel that way, because it's going to come back to bite us, all right? In fact, I would say it already is. So at this taping, it's in October, going to be in November when you see it, all of a sudden there's going to be holiday season, right? The various retailers are already telling us now, ah, depending upon what you want, you might want to put in your order earlier or you might want to buy that television now because we don't know when we're going to get another shipment of televisions. <laughs> now, so cousins, so you think about this. What does that mean? So you got that hot potato going on, right? And so products are coming from around the world Let's say from China, from Japan, from the Philippines, from all those kind of places, from Europe, from South America, and all these are products that you want, perhaps a finished product, okay, that you want to be able to get to your local store to buy. So that finished product is on a crate, is, is it in a container. That container, those things we see on the highways, the trucks are pulling back and forth, and they're trying to get into our various ports. So here's one of those infrastructure kind of questions, cousins. Some of the new super tankers bringing crates are so big, they don't fit in the USA existing ports. What do you think about that? So they can only load half the ship or a third of the ship at a time, unload it. 
All right. Another one I just heard today is that down in Baltimore, they're getting these brand new 425 foot cranes made in China. OK, you got that made in China because we don't do it because China also manages a lot of a lot of ports around the world, their companies. And so as a result of that, they can unload more ships that are higher. So now you've got that sort of thing going on. And then, by the way, the president tried to intercede and ask the ports out in California to work 24 hours. They were going to figure that out anyway, right? Because, hey, more money is more money. And all of a sudden, so then what happens? The price of those containers goes up. To have a shipment for a container going from point A to point B, the price is almost 10 times in some areas. So when that price is 10 times, what do you think the price of the goods inside of that container are going to do? It's going to go up. If, in fact, you have the longshoremen or those people who are working moving the crates off the, sh off the ships and onto the trucks is going to be take longer, have to work more hours, what do you think? The price is going to go up. If there are fewer truckers, because I had an episode last year, and we didn't really take care of the truckers during the COVID-19 epidemic, did we? But all those truckers stopped driving. They found other jobs close to home. Being a truck driver is hard work. It takes a lot of skill, okay? And so guess what? There aren't quite as many trucks. So that when you're unloading the crane off the truck and it turns around with this container, wants to drop it on a truck for the truck to pull off, the trucks have to be there. If they're not there, things slow down. Right, cousins? That's the supply chain blues right there. All right? So you talk about another situation. Talk about how COVID doesn't matter. It turns out that I think the GM, correct me if I'm wrong, I've read, they are actually produ reducing and uh, closing down plants. Not because they can't get tires. Not because they can't get the metal or the leather or, or whatever. They can't get the computer chips that go into trucks. Why? Because computer chips are made other places around the world. And just so, if, just so happens, there's a lot of people wanting computer chips. They're not getting them in time, so they're shutting down plants. So that means all plants around the cousin, for cousins who may or may not have said COVID was important and wearing a mask was the right thing to do last year, we can't get the chips, so the plants are shutting down. Cousins, you tell me what happens when the plant that's manufactured in your town shuts down. If they're not shutting down, they're scaling back because of reduced inventory and demand. You go to a car dealership now and try to find a new car and see what you're paying for. it. The price has gone up, cousins. So you put all these factors together on every little thing that we're getting and trying to produce. Oh, by the way, cousins, add into the supply chain thing that we had some weather events earlier this year, right? Fires in the mid in the out west and that sort of thing. We had flooding in the Midwest, flooding in the southeast because of hurricanes. We had you know floods and those kind of things in the northeast. Oh, cousins, come on! All right, we <laughs> had some serious issues. All of those factors consider and are part of the whole supply chain question. So when you look at that, <clears throat> you may start to understand and see why I said I have the supply chain blues. I wish I had somebody could play some, some guitar for me to get, help me with that a little bit, a little background. I'll work on that maybe for a future episode. But when you think about it, what happens or what can we do? Well, my suggestion is, cousin, just to recognize what the reality is. COVID had an impact on all of us. It had an impact on the global supply chain. And in fact, because of the ways different countries handled it, different countries were able to produce the products that are part of what they do for the rest of the world. Some did better than others. We were not one of the better ones, okay? The second part is that because of COVID-19 and the impact, prices are going up. Not only because of the, the absolute requirement, but in the old equation of, economic, of economics and economy, supply equals demand, the price goes up. There's also probably a little bit of profit taking because when there's an opportunity for chaos and people can say, hey, I can charge more for that now than I did before, prices go up. So, cousins, you start looking at these whole things as a political question? No. Maybe the political question is how we handle the COVID-19, being a public health and being more of a political question. It's not political in regards to maybe the products where we're getting sourcing from. 
it's an economic question of how the economy works and how that whole hot potato thing works, how no one wants to have any extra inventory. Why? Because inventory is expensive. Inventory costs companies money. So if I'm playing hot potato, then I have the minimum amount of, of money tied up in that asset, that piece of inventory, before it moves on somewhere else. You with me, cousins? Hot potato. Keep it moving. All right? Look at all those factors, cousin. I got the supply chain blues. All right? And so as a result, I would suggest the recommendation we all calm down. Recognize that what we've been accustomed to of having a most instantaneous delivery for activities might not be the way of the world in the future. We can live without that. You have to plan a little bit. For those of you who are going to be talking to young ones about the holiday season and gift giving, you might want to tell them, well, you know, the world's gotten a little bigger, which caused things to slow down. I don't know. Maybe that's an approach to use, okay? But let them understand that waiting is not a bad thing sometimes. We all do at some point in time in our lives. And instant gratification, which becomes the way we view things, is no longer what we can expect in many instances. COVID had a role, okay? Economics had a role. Whole supply chain concept had a role. There's a lot of factors. And as a result, it's also going to start us a little bit more money for the things we're looking to acquire. So, hunker down. Let's be cool. Let's ride this thing out, okay? Let's not point fingers. Let's recognize it's the way that it was structured, and the structure was not bad when it could work, but once it started having hiccups, then we start having delays. And for those folks who need help, we need to recognize it's not their faults, okay? It was a much larger and a bigger forces at play than any individual could perhaps support and or modify and or change. So we have to start doing our parts. Keep wearing your mask. Let's suppress COVID finally, only through our concerted, concentrated effort. And let's recognize we put policies in place in order to help us all get through these difficult times. With me, cousins? All right, so that wraps it up. That's why I had the supply chain blues. Hope you don't have them too bad. But if you do, have a quick one with me, just a little bit. All right, don't take too much. And we'll catch you next week on Brown Liquor and Bad Ideas. We are the people. Welcome to the show.